Hi everyone, Laura Jean, Bad Dream Cosplay here again. So I've been thinking really hard about what I want this tutorial to be about. And I've been scouring all of my sewing Facebook groups that I'm a part of. And somebody on one of the groups mentioned that they were brand new sewist and wanted to learn how to sew and asked, how do I measure myself before picking out what I want to make? So we're gonna answer that question today. How do you measure yourself? Which is step one in creating whatever you're gonna create. Some of the basic measurements that you will use is gonna be your bust, your waist, and your hip. So those are the three that we're going to measure today, but we're gonna talk about some other ones too because they do come in handy for other types of clothing or corsetry or other creative endeavors. So first thing you're going to need is a measuring tape that is flexible because your body is not straight. So flexible tape, it does not have to be one of these ones on a spool, it can be a loose one. Uh, you will need a writing implement of some sort. I have a pencil and you will want a notebook of some sort as well. So let's get me standing up and flip this camera around so you can see how to measure. All right, so we are almost ready to measure. The next step is really to get your foundations done. So foundations include things like shapewear, padding, muscle suits, compression shirts, um, binding shirts, uh, let's see what else, um, corsets underwire or padded bras which are going to give you a different shape than a non-underwire non-padded bra make sure you have those things on before you pull out the measuring tape usually you'll want to have somebody help you measure and you're going to want to do it with only your foundation garments on so no extra clothing we're for modesty's sake going to measure me over clothing just because we want to stay family friendly so measuring tape, I use inches because I'm a crazy American person and that's what we use here because Americans can't figure out the metric system. Um, so first thing we're gonna measure, like we said, we're gonna measure the bust first. So that bust line is right about the fullest part of the bust. So take your tape, you wanna make it horizontal and get you a nice little bust measurement there and make note of it. Make sure you're not pulling that tape super tight make sure you're giving yourself room to breathe remember your your chest gets bigger when you inhale and smaller when you exhale you want to be able to inhale so give yourself some space some breathing room okay the next one we're going to measure is the waist for measurements sake what they consider the waist is your skeletal waist so that means where your body bends naturally so um, I know some people are thinner up here, some people are thinner down here, but they want the skeletal waist, not the narrowest part of your waist. It's a big difference, all right? So again, making sure that you're nice and horizontal, giving yourself that little bit of breathing room so that you can breathe and move and be human because that's what it's all about. It's not the hokey pokey, it's about being human. Make sure you make note of these after each measurement because after about the second number, I lose track. And I like to measure each area three times to make sure and kind of take an average guesstimate uh, between those for my size. I t tend to think that's a little bit more accurate than going at it by itself. The next measurement we're gonna do, once I pull my chapstick out of my pocket, is our, our hip. What we want is the fullest part of our hip, right about there, so your hip bone is going to be what's called your high hip and we want your fullest part of your hip which is usually two to three inches below that making sure you're standing nice and even and got a nice horizontal tape on take note of that measurement again and um, those are the three major those are the three major most often used measurements for most costumery there are a few others that are used periodically um, so we talked bust, waist, hips. There's also high bust, which is going to be right about where the armpit level is. Under bust, which is literally right under the bust. It's going to be right where your underwire or your bra band sits if you wear a bra. Um, 
high hip is right where that iliac crest is, right where that bone on your pelvis sits. And then another one, if you wear a lot of fitted outfits um, or corsets, you're going to need your torso length. That torso length is from the under bust, and it's not the middle. It's, it's literally like there's your nipple and there's your under bust, draw a straight line. And then from there, straight down to your lap. If you were sitting in a chair, a hard chair, where your leg sits at about a 90 degree angle to your body, it's going to be from your under bust to your lap. That is your torso length. Very important if you're buying a corset because if you buy too long of a torso length, you're going to move your breast tissue up in a very uncomfortable way and you won't be able to sit because the bottom portion of that corset is going to cut into your thighs. Neither situation is comfortable or healthy. Safety first, for goodness sakes. Um, cup size is another one. Then anybody who does wear a bra, just in general, needs to know their cup size. Easiest way to figure out cup size, you take that, take your bust measurement and subtract your high bust measurement from that. And for every inch of difference, it's a cup size. So one inch is A, two inches is B, three inches is C, four inches is D, and so on and so forth. Remember, double D and F are the same inch measurement. Keep that in mind. All right, so we've now measured our bust, hip, waist, which for me, and then we talked about a few others. So we're gonna go back to the desk and find out what's next. All right, yay. Now we know what shape our body is. We know what our measurements are. We know what our dimensions are. We're pretty much all set to go and pick out our pattern, which is great. We're gonna talk about that some other time. I try really quick PSA or TED Talk, however you wanna put it. I like to avoid using the word size when it comes to the human body. And here's why. Society has this thing about the numbers for sizes. This, the size on your genes has nothing to do with what type of person you are. We all know this. Um, we, all, we all just do. So I try to avoid saying what size size is. Um, bodies, come in sh bodies come in shapes. Clothing comes in sizes. Your milk comes in a size. Things come in sizes. Human beings come in shapes. Um, the other reason I say that we come in shapes is because we're not one size fits all. Our clothing is not one size fits all. When you look at a woman's dimensions or a guy's dimensions and their ratios are different. And when I say ratio, I mean like their ratio between their hips and their waist, the ratio between their, their chest and their waist. Their, there's all sorts of ways to figure out what your shape is. None of those have anything to do with a size. When we're making clothing, we're not making a size of clothing. We're making clothing to fit a shape. We're not making clothing to fit a size. Um, this becomes really important because now that you know your measurements, the next thing you're gonna do is go shopping and pick out a pattern of some sort. And when you pick out that pattern, you're going to look at the envelope and you're going to compare your measurements to the matrix, the back guide on the back. And you're going to look at this. And if you're anything like me, you're going to go, oh, great. My waist fits under this size. My hips fit under this size. My bust is a third size. So what size do I buy? Yes, patterns come in sizes. It's the size of each particular piece. It's not your size, okay? You need to then think about how your measurements are, how your measurements that you took are going to affect the shape of the garment to make you know, the shape of your garment best fit your shape, all right? This means that you have to take into account how fitted the garment is or how loose the garment is, where the fit points are, where the loose points are. Sometimes you may end up making a garment that fits your biggest part and then tailoring down the rest. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is a custom bespoke item made by you for you. Nobody's gonna have another one like it. Nobody's gonna step into your shoes and walk away in them because it's yours, all right? So 
TED Talk over, PSA over, whatever. Get out there and have some fun. Make something for yourself, all right? That's what this is all about. This is Laura Jean, Bad Dream Cosplay. Follow me on Facebook. You know the drill. Like the video, follow me here, and uh, we'll talk to you some other time. And we're gonna move forward with this project together as well. We'll talk later on um, about how to choose a pattern, how to size a pattern, how to cut a pattern, how to choose materials for your pattern, etc. Um, again, if you have any suggestions for future chit chats like this, let me know. Um, even if I don't know the answer, I know a lot of people in the cosplay community, they may know and may be interested in teaming up with me, showing me how to make some things, and then they and I can show you how to make those things. Because guess what? Cosplayers help each other out. Um, good cosplayers help each other out. And I only know good cosplayers. What can I say? I'm lucky. Um, so anyway, Laura Jean, Bad Dream Cosplay, follow me. And let me know what you're up to. All right. Thank you. Ta-ta for now.